Hello, ako si JC Punong Bayan, resident economist ng Rappler, and you're watching Newsbreak Chats. Ngayong 2023, parang napapadalas yung mga problema sa ating mga airport. Noong New Year's Day, January 1, nag-shutdown yung ating air traffic control system na dahil daw sa sirang UPS or Uninterrupted Power Supply. Tapos 4 months later, nung Labor Day, May 1, namatay naman yung kuryente sa NIA 3 dahil daw sa short circuit sa electrical system. In both incidents, katakot-takot na perwisyo ang naidulot sa flying public mula sa delayed flights, cancelled flights, confusion at stress sa mga pasahero. Ngayon pa talaga yung nangyayari yan when demand for flights has gone back to pre-pandemic levels and air travel is supposed to boost the economy's recovery. Ano ang sanhi ng mga power outages na to? Sadyang lumang-luma ba ang electrical systems o may sabotahing nangyari? At ano ang pwedeng mga gawin na hakbang para maiwasan ang mga problemang ito? Ngayong hapon, makakasama natin si Lance Spencer Yu, Rappler reporter, na nakocover sa mga isyong ito. Welcome again, Lance, sa uh, Newsbreak Chats. Thank you. Welcome again. Okay, so uh, simula natin, Lance, dun sa parang timeline ng mga yeah. events kasi parang medyo napapadalas nga siya. Ano. So can you give us an overview of uh, ano yung mga main events, na, ano yung mga problems na nangyari in the past couple of months? Okay, so actually, yung January 1, no? since it's the start of the year, syempre yun yung first na big incident. But it's not the only one. So yung January 1, you had yung shutdown of the entire Philippine airspace. Uh, parang several hours yun. Tapos, uh, based on yung latest figures, no? mga 78,000 yung passengers na affected. That's both yung international and domestic flights. So talagang ang dami nun. And then actually, a few days after that, nung Uh, I believe, uh, Lunar New Year naman, I forgot the exact date, pero nagkaroon din ulit ng parang uh, stoppage of flights. Uh, that's because naman they were repairing uh, some of the components that broke on January 1. And then of course again, yung sa May 1 naman, uh, nagka-power outage, this time in Naiya Terminal 3. And mga 9,000 yung passengers affected. So these are all separate events naman, separate causes din. So what happened on January 1 was different from what happened on May 1. So medyo iba naman. But this is also not the first time it's happened. It's not all in this year. So 2016, nagka-power outage din in Naiya Terminal 3. And uh, September 2022, nagka-power outage ulit sa Naiya Terminal 3. So quite a, a long history of airport failures. Ayun nga eh. Um, pero actually... Uh... Uh, pwede siguro tayo mag-start doon sa January 1 incident mm. kasi nakita natin yung mga photos and videos sa mga airports. Grabe yung, I mean, horrific scenes. Uh, ito pa naman yung talagang isang uh, peak ng uh, travel uh, in the uh, usual calendar. Ano. So, uh, can you give us yung details kung uh, ano, what, what really happened doon sa January 1 incident? Okay, sige. So, actually, yung pinaka-detailed uh, step-by-step, no, yung minute-by-minute, minute, uh, medyo mahaba yun. Pero we have a story page actually on that. Yung it goes, it's a com, parang ano siya, interactive timeline siya. So you can scroll through it, you can see yung minute by minute details. Uh, but to summarize, no? to summarize, what happened on January 1, you can break it down into two different, not different, two related but separate events. Uh, so first, what happened was yung UPS, the one that supplies ngayong power to the airport, uh, both of them tripped at the same time. Uh, this was noong early morning, eh, mga 9 a.m., uh, when, when that happened, when they tripped, syempre nawala na electricity. And uh, once they tried to restore that, no, once they finally were able to restore that, what happened naman was nagka-overvoltage. So uh, there was too much, or parang hindi uh, appropriate yung voltage nung, uh, that went into the system. And what ended up happening is it literally fried the equipment, as in, Uh, according to yung eyewitness reports, may smoke and sparks na lumalabas sa, sa uh, satellites and other equipment over there. So yun, uh, those are the two separate events that ended up causing yung January 1 air traffic mess. Mm-hmm. And were we able to, was Rappler able to uh, talk to some of the passengers who were inconvenienced dun sa January 1 incident? Mm. So actually, yun nga eh, diba January 1? So imagine New Year and a New Year, no? Uh, but yes, we were actually able to talk to some of them. Uh, we have a story on this. Uh, and what we did was we reached out to them who were posting uh, via social media. 
and one of it, si Jala Tukan, she was flying from Manila to Hong Kong. Tapos imagine daw, sabi niya, 15 minutes away from landing in Naia. Biglang nag U turn yung flight. And you know, you, you wouldn't expect that normally. But what happened was, uh, as they were approaching Naia na, uh, they received orders not to uh, land first, kasi nga nagka power outage and they, they lost uh, air traffic control, no? So they were told to fly back to Hong Kong because they can't just keep flying around, diba? Uh, their fuel will drop. So they had to fly back to Hong Kong. And she was only able to come back to uh, Manila the next day now when they were able to fix the, you know, what happened in the airport. Hmm. Then there's also uh, other people the man who said they stayed at the airport overnight, uh, you know, on New Year's. Obviously, that's not exactly how you'd want to welcome the New Year, no. Hmm. But remember, these are just two or three of the 78,000 passengers affected. So many, many other stories, many other people who were affected that, by this. And um, actually, I just wanted to talk about that. No? I think this is also the reason why, you know, as journalists, uh, we can't really drop issues like this yet. Even, parang, you know, it's been months, the right? January 1, payon, and it's already um, May now. But it's important that we don't drop these kind of stories because it's, it's our gateway to the country, right? And so, of course, we can't allow these things to keep happening. That's yeah. right, kasi uh, nabalitaan ko rin na marami mga turista, mga foreigners, yeah. na talagang ito yung first impression nila sa bansa, di ba? We need to showcase our country, and yet, uh, ito yung sasalumong sa kanilang uh, yeah. uh, inconvenient events. Uh, speaking of not dropping this issue, so there have been uh, a number of investigations dito sa nangyari na to. Um, for example, Congress has looked into this, and uh, ano yung mga findings dun sa mga audit o sa mga investigations uh, in the past couple of months. Okay, so um, actually, that's something that we did know. We, uh, when we're talking about yung January 1, kasi they're also looking into the May 1. But when we talk about yung January 1 incident, uh, the Congress and I believe Senate has also been investigating it. And they've already wrapped up yung investigations, hearings nila, and they came out with yung uh, Senate report, Senate committee report. And that's a big chunk of what we use to uh, write this story on, you know, what really happened on January one. And um, there's there's many different things that went wrong on January one, no. But if you were to look at yung pinaka root cause talaga, they said that it's a lack of proper maintenance. So yung equipment, for example, the senators when they visited the CAAP facilities, they found that parang magto two years na in some areas that and they weren't properly maintained for all those two years. May uh, automatic voltage regulator so that adjusts the electricity if it's not, uh, you know, if it's not what it should be, and that was broken ever since August 2022, all the way until January 1. So parang ang tagal na nun, diba? mm-hmm. And under uh, yung parang what should be in in engineering standards, it should only be a few hours, and yet it's been several months that it's not been repaired. So. Those are some of the root causes. Mm-hmm. Umabas balance dun sa investigations kasi um, some people were speculating that maybe there's some element of sabotage involved. Mm-hmm. Um, kasi nangyari itong mga mishaps na to on key occasions, on key holidays na parang talaga maximum yung magiging impact niya on uh, tourism and then travel as well. So um, may ganun bang klaseng element na lumabas dun sa investigation? Yes, that's actually one angle that they were looking at. Pero, yung sa January 1 incident at least, uh, I believe uh, that was ruled out, or parang it's very unlikely that it was sabotage. Yung sa May 1 naman, uh, this is the second time it happened na on a holiday, uh, they're, they're still conducting yung investigation by NICA and all the other uh, security government agencies. But parang ongoing pa rin yung investigation. And so, we don't quite know yet kung what the result of that will be. Pero as you said, it's... It's very disruptive because it's a holiday. Eh. Going back Lance, dun sa January 1 uh, event, um, I think one of the uh, issues that uh, were raised as well uh, as one of the problems, yung uh, brain drain na mga air traffic controllers. Uh, I mean, uh, there are lucrative offers outside. Uh, and uh, I mean, uh, people are uh, choosing that instead of uh, serving uh, sa CAAP, for example, or as mm. air traffic controllers. So, Agano ka crucial siya as an element or as a factor in uh, these recent mishaps? Yeah, actually, dito sa mismong January 1 incident, 
hindi naman siya nang parang it, it's not the cause because yung what happened on January 1 parang talagang nawalan ng power so even if you had yung air traffic controllers medyo you know they can't really do anything but if you look at it yung sa long run sustainability ganon and of course yung quality of air traffic control it, it it's a problem because we're not we don't have as many air traffic controllers as we'd want to especially in regional airports for example and that's because then the the gap in salary is very very high so for example uh yung mga air traffic controllers natin uh they're only being paid around 40,000 a month uh, which which isn't that it doesn't sound that low but when you compare it to other the the pay in other countries for in Qatar for example they can earn nine times more so that's mga 380,000 a month no wonder <laughs> <laughs> no wonder yeah tapos hindi lang yun may free housing benefits for them and their children pa so there's there's really a, a very big gap in terms mm -hmm. of pay. Mm -mm. And then when it comes to the equipment that you mentioned, uh, were outdated or needs to be fixed. Um, ano ba yung mga investments that need need to be made in the coming years para ma prevent ng ganong classing issue when it comes to air traffic control related again to the January one incident. Okay, so in air traffic control, naman, what they found was that uh, some of the systems are not redundant. So what that means is kunwari, uh, may nag-fail na component dito. There's nothing to sort of back it up. Uh, and for example, in the issue ng UPS, no, you have two UPS units. So you'd assume na, okay, if one fails, may isa pa naman UPS. But what they found out was that even if there's two of them, uh, I forgot the exact technical term, but if one of them fails, the other one also fails. So parang, <laughs> you know, it, it's useless. But now, actually recently, Kaap has um, replaced the UPS. They, they, I think this was on May 17, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the date is around that. Uh, they, they replaced the UPS system, uh, and now they have two UPS units again, but this time they're independent. Na. So if one fails, supposedly the other will still kick in. So those are the small improvements among that they're making to make sure this won't happen. Mm -hmm. Punta naman tayo, sa more recent incident, yung uh, Labor Day incident. Uh, kung saan nagkaroon ng power outage, uh, apparently not just in IA 3 but also in IA 1 and 2. Pero yeah. ano yung uh, differences dun sa experiences sa uh, iba't ibang terminals natin? Yes, so actually yun nga eh. When you think of what happened on May 1, what people see, di ba parang Terminal 3 lang yung nawala ng power. But actually, uh, they, they were mentioning this no uh, in the, one of the house hearings, that it's not just May, it's not just Terminal 3 that lost power. Actually, all terminals, one, two, and three, they were all affected. They all experienced what they said was a, a electrical disruption. But only terminal three lost power. And that's because terminal one and two, they were able to automatically switch you know, to generator power. In the case of terminal three, uh, they have a problem with their automatic transfer switch. So what that means is that it will transfer your electricity uh, electricity mo, it will transfer it to generator power, mm -hmm. uh, but it didn't work in their case. So nag manual sila, they had to manually switch it, which takes up to an hour. Mm -hmm. Tapos another problem is also that their generators mismo, yung gensets nila, it's not enough to power the whole system. Uh, mga thirty percent lang daw. So they can power yung critical systems, yung mga, uh, I believe immigration, uh, yung luggage systems, but for some like yung air conditioning, wala. So as you, if you read through the social media posts, a lot of uh, people are saying, init noon, ba? So those are some of the findings that they have so far. Mm -hmm. So stress na yung mga tao sa uh, delayed or canceled flights, tapos mainit pa. Mainit pa. <laughs> Silang may stress. <laughs> yes. Diba? So uh, apparently, um, wala ding redundancies balance doon sa power system naman ng na IA3 specifically. I mean, parang isa recurring theme, no? Doon sa yeah. ka doon sa air traffic control system, walang redundancies. And then dito ulit sa power supply naman sa na IA3. Um, so, uh, I mean, uh, which is odd kasi yung na IA3 is the, big, the biggest or parang mm -hmm. it services uh, the most number of flights, I believe. Uh, so, asa nagkulang yung, uh, yung na IA3 in that regard? Actually, na IA3 has a long and complicated history. No? Uh, na IA3, uh, even before it was opened, uh, it faced many legal issues. And pati yung mismong turnover. So when, even when the government finally was able to open it, no? after it settled all those legal complaints, parang the contractor who built na IA Terminal 3 did not turn over some documents. Yung mga uh, as-built plans, yung mga sketches of the 
the electrical systems and everything, not all of it were properly were, were turned over. Mm -hmm. So imagine that kung naka problem ka like this, it's hard to work back, it's hard to fix it. So aside from not having redundant systems and aging equipment, no, that's another problem. They don't even have yung mismong plans. And aging equipment because uh, they, this was also mentioned in one of the congressional hearings, no, uh, that the equipment is already past its life expectancy. Parang mm -hmm. more than 20 years na siya. So mm -hmm. that's another issue. Mm -hmm. So kahapon, Lance, nagkaroon ng uh, uh, hearing on this, ano, ang Congress. And uh, ano yung mga napag-usapan doon sa hearing? Um, were they able to, uh, I mean, bring out any of the uh, crucial elements that led to the power outage? Um, so far, I believe they're still, think they're still establishing kung ano yung pinaka-root cause. Like, if it was a fault, on the supply side, yung Meralco, or if it's a fault naman sa load side, which is uh, the one managed by uh, Mia. So there's still no conclusive uh, evidence on what exactly went wrong. Yun lang nga, they're, they're at least making efforts to, to stop this from happening again. So uh, for example, they said that they've already uh, made efforts to get yung mga gensets so that hindi lang 30% yung of a power in yeah. and mm -hmm. also to fix the automatic transfer switch, mm -hmm. the one that automatically switches kung wala ng power. Mm -hmm. So yun yung what they're saying so far. Mm -hmm. In researching these stories, sa lands, uh, yeah. kaano kahirap or kadale makakuha ng information from authorities uh, in the air uh, air regulation in, uh, sector. Ah, okay. So that <laughs> that's actually one thing, no. Uh, talking about the January one incident. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were trying to contact Kaap, of course, because Kaap is the relevant agency. Kaso also, I can imagine it's not just Rappler who's trying to contact them. Bakana overwhelm sila, no? Mm -hmm. So we are trying to reach out, message, um, call them by phone, mm -hmm. uh, email. But they've been very uh, overwhelmed, maybe a bit slow to respond. Mm -hmm. So most of us, uh, we had to rely on um, press releases and and. Uh, mga press press con mm -hmm. and then since press since that was January uh, you know January one virtual lang yung press con so mm -hmm. that makes it harder to bring up issues and mm -hmm. things like that and uh, no, another thing by the way another another thing was we actually tried to interview some air traffic controllers mm -hmm. uh, on January one asking them what went wrong but um, some of them declined to be interviewed they said that they received a memo saying that uh, from management that, uh, mm -hmm. to not uh, entertain media interviews and and the the one I talked to he said that um, his hands are tied that he can't mm -hmm. you know he can't talk about the issue so those are some of the problems that you face when trying to figure out a story like this and what we ended up doing you know we relied on those press conferences young Senate report mm -hmm. based on their Senate hearings and also the house hearings mm -hmm. uh, at this point Lance I think uh, kailangan natin banggitin yung uh recent na um, preventive suspension uh, ng head ng MIA um, na si uh, Cesar Chong. So, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean uh, ano bang nangyari dun sa issue na yun and how is it related, if at all, dito sa mga recent mishaps? Okay, so that's actually interesting, no? Kasi si uh, Cesar Chong, he's actually uh, handpicked by si Secretary, DOTR Secretary Jaime Bautista. Mm -hmm. And you'd think that would make him well qualified, right, to run it. But he's been placed under preventive suspension uh, because the ombudsman cited anonymous MIA officials who were filing complaints against him for alleged grave abuse of authority. So mm -hmm. those were the terms used. And what they're saying is that around 285 MIA uh, employees were moved around, they were reassigned in less than a year. So they weren't necessarily fired, but they were given new roles. Mm -hmm. So ayun, because of that, they're saying that's, that's an abuse of authority. Uh, Bautista though, yung DOTR secretary, he's come out to defend Chong, which isn't surprising, because mm -hmm. that's his hand-picked mm -hmm. uh, appointee, mm -hmm. saying that he never had the chance to really defend himself or explain before the ombudsman placed him under suspension. Mm -hmm. So ayun, actually, we, we asked about Secretary Bautista what he thinks of it. Uh, what he thinks about the suspension, you know, is this related to what happened at Naia, and it's not just about the supposed grave abuse of authority. And then, you know, he just smiled. The pasabinya, ano, you can do your own speculation. So mm. very open-ended. I see. 
And uh, si Secretary Bautista himself uh, mm -hmm. used to be uh, an executive sa PAL for right. a long time, ano? So you would think na parang he has a solid grasp of the issues, he's uh, uh, in control of the whole thing. Um, pero, I mean, how has, be, has he responded to these uh, uh, failures and um, any mga steps that he is taking, uh, his agency is taking to prevent future incidents? Yeah, that's actually hard to say. Um, you know, Bautista has been appearing in a lot of the Senate hearings, a lot of the Congress hearings, and um, he's been, I suppose, trying to figure things out. It's, it's hard to pin the blame or pin the what happened to a particular person. Because uh, what happened in Naia, what happened in January 1, it's like a, a cascade of many, many different factors going wrong. So when you look at the history of the air traffic equipment, this, this stretches back all the way into, I believe, late 1990s was when it was uh, started. So I mean, it's been passed down many uh, administrations, many CAAP officials. Uh, and so it's not just about Bautista, it's a whole, you know, a whole, I, I suppose you can look at it as a timeline talaga of what went wrong all the way back. Mm -hmm. So it just I, happened that they were in position at the time na lumabas na itong mga problems. Na that could be one of the reasons, <laughs> diba? But also, it's also a bit strange when you think about it, parang too successive and the same, you know, in a few months. So mm -hmm. it's, it's also difficult to pinpoint in it. Mm -hmm. If it's perhaps the leadership's at fault, or is it just so happened that, you know, these things were building up for a long time and it just so happened to be now? Mm -hmm. It's really hard to say. Mm -hmm. Speaking of leadership, uh, ano yung mga, I mean, has the president uh, looked into this? Um, mm -hmm. What has he said about um, all of these uh, problems? And uh, I mean, um, is he on top of the situation? And um, is he aware of what's happening? <laughs> yes. So actually, uh, when we, when Secretary Bautista spoke to the media, uh, right mm -hmm. after these incidents on January 1, May 1, uh, he always mentioned that he just came off the phone from the president, uh, that he briefed the president on what happened. And uh, President Marcos basically gives the same instructions no? to bring back normal operations as soon as possible. So that's, that's what he instructs. Uh, he's also been saying uh, publicly that he wants to improve the airports, not in, uh, maybe looking into technology now that can make it better and also taking best practices from other airports, uh, which I assume he has a lot of experience going abroad. So uh, yeah, those are the, some of the things that he said about the issues. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, we have time, Lance, to talk about the uh, pri planned privatization of NAIA. Yeah. So, uh, kahit briefly, lang, ano, kasi I think uh, in the long run, I mean, uh, that's part and parcel of the possible solution in, um, in all of these problems. Ano ba yung very broad overview ng uh, planned privatization na yun? And uh, what are the chances of that pushing through in the, in the uh, current administration? Right. So when they say yung privatization efforts, uh, it's not complete, no? I mean, like, they're, they're still working out yung terms of reference. So that means what exactly will they be privatizing? What's the extent? Ganon. But so far, what they're thinking of is yung operations, maintenance will be uh, turned over to the private sector. So the latest bid so far, no, yung, unsolic yung unsolicited proposal, that's a consortium of conglomerates, which is something that's not new also. There was a similar uh, attempt before. Um, what's new this time, I guess, is that yung Metro Pacific, yung kay Manny Panginina, it's mm -hmm. not there anymore. So those are some of the changes. But it's, it's something that's been done before. Mm -hmm. And I think actually now there's more support from the administration uh, si Bautista, si Sec Bautista, he actually said that the Marcos administration is very open to mm -hmm. privatizing yung terminals ng NAIA. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, I guess we're down to our last uh, question, Lance. Uh, based yeah. on the state of affairs, uh, the investigations that have happened, and uh, what comes out as yung mga problems, parang nagsi mushroom yung mga <laughs> problems, na, uh -oh. uh, uh, all of them are out in the open. Um, what are the chances of uh, a similar incident happening again uh, in the coming months? Uh, for, whether it's uh, something to do with um, the air traffic control system or yung power outages in any of the terminals, uh, do you think um, it's possible pa na mag maulit yung ganong classing problems? This is something interesting, no? Because if you this is something that's been asked, you know, at every congressional hearing, every press con, every uh, Senate hearing, and the officials are always 
very careful in the way they phrase their response. It's always, uh, parang, it's unlikely to happen, but it's not impossible. So, parang may small window na uh, it could happen, it could not happen. But what they're saying is uh, they're extending their best efforts. That's a quote directly from C. Si DG Tamayo ng Kaap. So, he's like, uh, in the best position, I suppose, to answer that. But they did say that, you know, even if it's not impossible, the possibility of yung shutdown, complete shutdown of uh, airspace is a lot less, especially with yung equipment that they're installing. For, ex for instance, yung dalawang UPS systems na bago. Kasi nga, it's, it's independent of each other. So supposedly, it's a bit more redundant. Kung one fails, there's still another. And uh, ayun, that's actually one of the important things that they can look towards to, making sure that there are redundant systems and making sure that they work and that they're well maintained in the future. Mm -hmm. So, yun yung mga, uh, I think, points to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have any tips that we can give to our uh, flying public <laughs> <laughs> when well, next time they uh, have a flight? And uh, I mean, uh, what should they brace for or right. expect? Well, it's, it's kind of sad to be giving tips out, no? Kasi parang <laughs> that should be the responsibility of the government to That's make right. it reliable. But hopefully, it doesn't happen again and they don't have to uh, go through that. Although the government has been consistent in saying uh, arrive at the airport at least three to four hours beforehand. So maybe that's something they can do now. Arrive at the airport a bit earlier. And bring a lot of patience. I yes. Guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sige. I think uh, we can leave uh, this uh, for now, Lance. Thank you so much uh, reports mo. And uh, hopefully, uh, ni na maulit uh, yung ganong klaseng massive na interruptions sa mga flights. So, ayun, that's all the time that we have for uh, this afternoon's uh, News Break Chats. I'm JC Punong Bayan, and uh, see you in the next episode of News Break Chats.